Take two. Thursday yes. Thunder. On a Thursday? Yep. Not on a Saturday. Not a Saturday, not on a Tuesday. No, on a, on a Thursday. Thursday. Back to its rightful place. Where it should be. Yep. What's been happening? Not much. It's only been, well, it's only been three days since, four days since we did the last yes. one? Yes, yep, since Saturday. Yeah. Uh, which didn't go up until Monday. Nope. Um, back on schedule now, though. Back on schedule. Yes. Yes. Yes, I don't, all my staff back to work. That's good, yes. Delivanting around holidaying. Or being sick unnecessarily. <laughs> Unnecessarily sick. <laughs> um, what's been happening? Uh, not much. Jim's looking the best it has in a while. They've been pretty damn busy as well. Yeah, we've yeah. picked up nearly 20 odd members this so month. Far. So thanks so to all the members. Still got five days. Five days of our special, $3.99 special, including 24 hour access. Yep. No joining fees um, or any other fees. That's it. $3.99 for 12 months. Come and check it out. Uh, first visit is free. I was at the Salisbury shop. There's mm -hmm. husband and wife coming in tomorrow. Okay. They're going to come in for and check it out. That'll be good. Yeah. Extra two. Mm. Hopefully. Yeah. So they're going to come and check it out. Um, injury report. You're telling I'm, me your elbow sore. Yeah. Um, old tendonitis flaring up as per usual, but upside, um, knees the best it's been in about eight weeks. Sciatic nerves best it's been in ten. So back to squatting heavy again. Very good. But that's a good test for me to tomorrow's deadlift day. Ah, yes. And yourself, I saw you hurt your calf. I a hurt bit. my calf on Monday, yes. And it scared the hell out of me. I was leg pressing. Leg pressing mm. and I hurt my calf. Um, and it was like someone put a knife into my calf. Mm. It was really, really, really sore. Yeah. Yeah, and I stopped straight away and I iced it here for about an hour. And the next day it felt all right. Yesterday it felt 100% better again, to the point that I trained as per normal. <laughs> uh, and today I can only just feel it. So That's I obviously good. caught it once, but my training partner keeps calling me the Wolverine because I seem to heal really fast. Oh, when I'm your age, because it was dying. Monday night, I'm telling you, when I got home, I couldn't walk. I couldn't yeah. put weight on it. I struggled to walk from the car into the house. Yeah, I didn't, you didn't come in on the Tuesday. No, no, we had a new program is one day on, one day off. So oh, it was a rest yeah. day, which was good. Uh, but yeah, good. so uh, touch wood, no major damage. Excellent. Otherwise, everything else is fine. Now, um, last week we spoke about Jeremy being called out. Yes, yes, I yeah, remember. Yeah, and it was really funny because Jeremy got called out on our video. Yeah, on a... It was funny, you got called out on a call out video, which you got called out on. That's right. So, it's a, you've made it, buddy. Well done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Every and, social and, platform. And he was actually then at the same time, Kwame was called out. And yeah. so, Jeremy was just chuffed that he made it onto the same yeah. list as Kwame. <laughs> um, anyway, moving along. Uh, we spoke about um, the Arnold Australia, how mm -hmm. a couple of the Aussies pulled out. And we uh, spoke about Brandon Curry looking ridiculous, yes. and, even and how Tony Doty is most probably calling him as we spoke. Yep. Well, guess what? He's in. Tony Doty called him, and he's in. Beautiful. So Brandon Curry is in the Arnold Australia. Um, that's all so far that has been done to replace uh, Josh and uh, Sam. But I think Brandon is. Uh, he's looking. There was another photo just yesterday. One yesterday. He just looks incredible. He's just getting better and better and better. I listened to an interview with Brandon Curry on the Size Game podcast. Mm. Um, so um, just look up the Size Game in iTunes. Yep. It's a British podcast. Uh, they interviewed Brandon. He had a really good insight into what happens in Kuwait. Okay. Yeah. So without going too much into it, it takes a long time, but it's, it's basically like a training camp. You don't do anything else except eat, sleep, eat, train, that's it. People come and call you from your room, right, mm. we're going to go do cardio now, we're going to go train now, we're going to go do this body part. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was saying you really don't even know what's happening the next day. They'll just come in and say we're doing this and that and that. And you just These coaches look it? at you, it's just a full on like a training camp, 100%. Nothing but bodybuilding. Yeah. Wow. And the, it pays dividends. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, coming out of there. It's, it's obviously puts these guys into a, a such a, a regimented schedule with no distractions, nothing mm. which they would normally have outside yeah. um, in their normal environment. 
Uh, so yeah, Brandon Curry is in, and that'll be interesting. And I think he's also doing the New Zealand Pro. I'm not that'll sure, be but good. I think hopefully he hopefully he actually places very high because he's this is the best he's looked in years. Yeah, by far, full yeah. sharp. As long as I mean, we all see these photos of these guys looking ridiculous. Yeah, one week out, two weeks out. Um, and then on on the day of the comp, they're disappointing. Mm. So I hope Brandon can live up to that. Um, another one that's looking really freaky is that um, Ash Ashkenani dude from yeah. Kuwait. I did the guy who uh, won the Arnold Australia Amateurs last year, yeah. and then went on to win a pro show and came second in the Olympia to Flex Lewis. He there were some videos and uh, pictures going up. Ari will put these up as we're speaking. He just looked looks nuts. This yeah, guy. it's hard it's, to believe he's two twelve. Yeah, it, yeah. It's just that size proportion. Like he looks like well, he's like he's not. He's just a tight at tad under five and a half feet, yeah. or just above, and he's looks. He's looks back. He's ridiculous, yeah. and his hamstring ham is hang is nuts. Yeah, yeah. He is he is a freak. Um, I I don't think anybody can beat this guy. Um, you know, unless he just comes in way off shape. Mm. But from the photos, he wasn't. And I think he's going to push flex Lewis this year from the Olympia. That's a yeah. tough call. Yeah, tough so, call. Um, this guy is going to be really good. Um, speaking about the Arnold, there was a, an interesting. Uh, topic I heard during the week about the Arnold USA mm. and that especially with the they were talking about the pullouts and everything um, with Josh pulling out and that the 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 list is actually quite shallow I think it's only about nine or ten competitors yeah. um, now out of those competitors there's nobody from the Olympia top six Wow and there's only two competitors from the Olympia top ten so essentially is this this is going to open up a a brand new well it, it is but guys. the question was being asked was that why the Arnold used to be classified really as the second to the Olympiads yeah. in the prestigious competition yes most Olympia competitors did it um, warm up for the Olympia. you know the prize money is not bad it's like hundred and twenty thousand dollars or something you know so why all of a sudden and I've noticed this it's not just this year it was in, in the past years the Olympia has sort of watered down in, mm. in the competitor numbers and the quality of, the, I mean the uh, Arnold USA. Um, they were talking about it and I, I was thinking about it too and I, they discussed all these things and I tend to agree. I think, I think one is that the prestige of the Arnold has now, has been watered down. Because yeah. there's Arnold Europe, there's Arnold Asia, there's Arnold Australia. Wasn't well, there a new one? Very soon? Like, well, there's there... Arnold South Africa, Arnold Spain, Arnold Europe which is uh, Arnold Brazil, so there's one in every continent, yeah. pretty well. Um, so these competitors have got a lot of Arnolds to do, even though the prize money at these other Arnolds is nowhere near what the Columbus one is. Yeah, that's the So I think it has sort of been watered down, the prestige of the contest has been watered down. You know? so, yeah. Is that good for pro bodybuilding or bad for pro bodybuilding? Um, I used to look forward to the Arnold because it was the second most yeah. prestigious show of the year, it really was. Now it seems to be that it's just another another just pro another show. show yeah. 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 It's a bit it's a bit disappointing. It is, but it really is, yeah. Um, maybe there's a, a major bigger plan for all these new shows coming out. And, yeah, know. I mean they're putting out a lot of pro shows. I think yeah. this year has got, I think on the circuit there's another one or two. So it's going to be again, once the circuit kicks in after the Arnold, there's going to be one or two pro shows every month right up into the Olympia. So it's it's good for the pro bodybuilders. Yeah. Um, but what it most probably does is it makes every show is a little bit a, a weaker show. It's mm. not, you know, it's not going to be those big. Whereas before, you used to have four or five pro shows a year. Yeah. So these guys knew they had to compete in these. So the lineups were pretty good, good quality. Yeah, you find like a lot top, top two, top three Olympians, and one That's or right. two now it's none. No, <laughs> no. So it's a little bit disappointing. Um, but like you said, it opens the door to some other people to yeah. win it. Yeah. Even though I think Cedric's going to clean up. Yeah, well, hopefully. Yeah. Well, he, you know, is, you got um, you got Cedric, and you got Lionel Baiki, and you got Dallas. Dallas, they're, they're pretty well. They're the three guys I yeah. think that are going to clean up these first early shows. Yeah. In what order? Uh, the only other dark horse now is Brandon Curry. Yeah. You know, if he can maintain that look that he's presenting now, mm. well, then he's going to be right up there. Because yeah, I think yeah. Dallas put a photo like last week. People were saying he's looking tighter, but yeah, his his stomach looks a bit his, soft. His waist is still a bit, and he hasn't got that really big, nice, detailed back. Yeah. He looks impressive from a couple of shots, but I don't think he he can. You know, if, if um, Bayaki and um, 
Cedric are on. Yep. Uh, well, then Dulles is going to be third. It's mm. as simple as that. I don't think he can move into those guys. Yeah. Here. And then you throw Curry into the mix. And I yeah, think he's yeah. going to be the big dark horse. Um, the amateur show qualifications for the uh, Arnold Australia kick off this weekend. Okay. So there's Gold Coast show. I think um, I think we have the um, Melbourne shows. I yeah, Melbourne well. show is coming up very yeah, soon. Yeah, I think it is this weekend. Um, so it'll be interesting. We'll get the first glimpse of these super heavyweight guys that all have to compete. Oh, there, there was one guy I saw. He was like five five eleven. He was weighing like 110, 112 kilos. Yeah. He just looked insane. So I think. I think one of the most exciting lead up is to the is the amateurs in Australia at the yeah. moment. Should be interesting to see. So we'll have a bit more news next week on some of these qualification shows. Uh, as long as the IFBB does something about it and posts up results somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> sure we'll be able to find it somewhere else. Um, moving right along, I've got a question that was we would some we were discussing this at a shop. Um, and someone was asking me how long I've been training for, and like I've been training for a long time. Um, and he asked, and we started talking about it. He, he basically asked if I could turn the clock back mm. to when I started training, what three things would I implement that I know now, yep. if I knew back then? Um, now there's a lot of things, and I must admit, when I started training, you know, we're talking about real dinosaur age. Like there was no internet. <laughs> there was only magazines. The bodybuilding scene was nothing like what it is now. Yeah. It was just it was underground, and if you competed, you were actually a weirdo, not the opposite. Of that, like these days, yeah. um, it was difficult to get any sort of information or help. I used to get all my information from Muscle and Fitness magazines. <laughs> and things like that. I remember a, th yeah. a story you were telling me about that a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, based on that. And to compare what's available now, mm. but if I knew what I know now, the number one thing I would implement is I would learn how to eat. Yeah. Um, that nutrition side to training is so important. So if you're just started training, the first thing I would suggest to you is learn how to eat. Learn what to eat. If you don't know, if you can't work out through all the stuff online or everything, then pay someone. Yeah. Come and see someone like yourself or a, some sort of reputable um, bodybuilding slash nutritional mm. coach who knows who about. knows food. Yeah, That's exactly works, right. Yeah. And it's worth you paying that person a few dollars to get an eating plan yeah. and you learning how to eat because uh, I didn't know what I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Eat, you know, yeah. you know. I always thought it was like Friday nights we used to train and I used to buy a whole roast chicken and eat it and thinking, oh, well, that's what you need to do. But I had yeah. no idea. So, one, learn how to eat. The second thing I would do straight away is I would pay someone to teach me how to squat, bench, and deadlift properly. Yep, the three primary movements. Yeah. Yeah. So I would actually go to a recognized powerlifting coach and I would learn and I would pay him, sign up to him even for a short course or something and learn how to do those three lifts. Yeah. And then work on those three lifts to get stronger at them. Progressive overload, try and lift and get as strong as you possibly can. Because as soon as you are pulling one, 200 kilos off the ground, yep. squatting 150 for reps, benching 100 plus, the bigger you're gonna be. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And again, uh, pretty well I must admit, for the first five years that I went in the gym, I just fired us around. Yeah. Pretty well copied what some guys were doing and um, had no idea, really. I had no structured plan for a long time. So, number one, learn how to eat. Number two, pay someone to teach you how to perform those three big lifts and then work progressively on getting them stronger. Yeah, and then Th work on That should be the core parts. of your training program. Leg day, squat should be the core. Chest day, bench should be the core. Mm. Back day, deadlift should be the core. Yeah. Add other exercise after that, yeah. but that is the core um, on those lifts. I mean, Damon Hayhow put up a post from Recon. Yep. When he started training, that's all he did was those three lifts. Mm. And just worked on every lift, every training day, try and lift more than he did last yeah. time. Yeah, So yeah, that's critical. Um, the third one, now there could be lots of things I could put into this third category, but based on what happened to me this week, <laughs> um, if you feel a twinge while you're doing an exercise, stop, Yep. get some ice and start icing it. Don't aggravate it. Yeah, don't, don't be a hero and don't think, oh yeah, I'm going to keep pushing on through, I'm going to finish my workout. 
stop your workout, yeah. go get a packet of peas, wrap it in a tea towel, and put it on that affected part, and ice for 10 minutes yeah. on, 10 minutes off for an hour. I mean, they're, they're, they're aligned to no pain, no gain. If you've got no tendon, you're not gonna... No, Yeah. no, and a lot of times, that twinge you feel at the beginning is a precursor to the major yeah. injury. And if you stop on that twinge, and you do put in some sort of remedial action to fix it, you're, you've most probably yeah. dodged the bullet and walked away without not a big injury. Yeah, nip it in the butt before Something that works. might keep you out for one or two days is a lot better than something for one or two months. That's my, I don't know how you feel about that. I no, mean, no, been, I, I agree. No? I, I mean, look, number yeah. three could be a lot of things, but um, I, I think those three things are, are, yeah. are right up there, pretty important Definitely, things. injury management, learn how to eat, yeah. learn how to lift properly. Learn how to lift, yeah, yeah, and concentrate on getting stronger, you yeah. know? Um, I, I, I see no point if your gym has got, you know, seven different forms of a lat pull down on you doing seven different lat pull down exercises, <laughs> no. No, deadlift, do one lap pull down exercise, yeah. you know? And what, yeah. when you obviously get that size and strength, that's when you want to sort of work from detailing movements, like more like a close yeah, group. Of exactly, exactly right. Sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you see a lot of young kids these days, I do like, I'll do like 10 variants of rows, and I'll avoid Exactly it right. I, I see no point. No. No, no point, point at all. So yeah. So that's, that's my little tidbit on, if you could turn back the clock, what would I do? And I'd suggest that you guys, if you're starting training, even if you've been training for a little while, think about implementing those things. I, it's so many people I know got no idea about nutrition, yeah. none whatsoever. I did, you know. I, I've had people ask me what a carb is, <laughs> you know, and that's that's true, you know. And I think the same thing with with those three lifts. Yeah. I see more people avoiding those lifts than actually doing them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And since we've been here at the gym, I must admit, when I first started here four years ago. Nobody deadlifted here no. at all, you know? And now, pretty well all of our members deadlift, they yep. all squat, they all bench, you know? And that's what we try to tell them. Yep. Um, just quickly moving along, um, we've got our uh, ICN posing classes are on again. So check out the ICN South Australia Facebook page. Um, all the times and the dates uh, and the venues are there. Uh, every Saturday and Sunday, right up until Comp. This weekend, or right now, we're about eight and a half weeks mm -hmm. out. Um, so the show is now starting to really ramp up. Poster will be out in a couple of weeks' time. We'll bring the poster out about six weeks out. Yep. So we'll have the poster out. Uh, we've got a great list of sponsors uh, for this year. Uh, and by all means, the show's looking to be a big one. The first of the shows is starting in Melbourne next weekend, which is the Melbourne Rookie and Rising Star show uh, so far 323 entries wow for people coming in so um, just a huge huge amount of entries for that show um, and after that there'll be pretty well a show every just about every week right up until um, season 8 closes on June 23rd with the world amateur titles in Thailand that'll be good um, all right that's it we'll just yep. quickly mention we mentioned last week blaze blaze is now in stock at Australian muscle and online. Um, we're going to do a proper full-on review on this uh, following this video so you might probably see it below in the list on our face on our YouTube channel. Um, as you can see it's got the DMHA in there. <laughs> um, this is a this is on the lines with double tap. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say pretty firstly, full I'd on, say it's stronger than double yeah, tap. Yeah. Pretty full on yeah. um, pre-workout slash fat burner. So just check out our AM reviews coming up. We'll be yep. talking about that next. We'll also be covering Gentex new pre-workout Psych 2.0. Um, again, probably right underneath this video, but very, very good basic pre-workout, not overload with stimulants. Probably just got your caffeine, your caffeine and but B vitamins in there. A lot more review are coming on that very, very soon, but. Yeah, typical, yes. I, you know, I've been looking forward to this one. I mean, Nick Jones does, um, Really good product. He does, yes. Doesn't load them up with unnecessary ingredients, uh, just the ones that he feels are the best and a really good reason for it. So we'll talk about that in one of our AM reviews coming up as well. Cool. I think that's it. That's it. It's a good one. Considering it was only three or four days between the two, we no, still we found a lot, and there's a lot starting to happen now. So um, yeah, next week we'll talk about some of the qualifiers. Uh, we'll be on uh, the eve of the Arnold Classic USA. Mm -hmm. 
So that'll be interesting to see what's happening there. Uh, and we'll catch you guys next week. See you later. See ya.